what an elevator pitch is. How many of you know what an elevator pitch is? Let me have a show of hands. Good. So we have a good number, but there's, I'm sure, many of you that don't know. Um, the whole idea behind an elevator pitch is that if you were ever, you know, looking for an investor for your company and you went to to try to find someone that, to invest in it, you would go to a big company and they would have this high rise. And if you ran into someone from the C-suite, because all the C-suites are on the top floor, you would have about 90 seconds to pitch your idea to that executive that you want to get money from for your, for your company. So that's kind of how it was founded. I mean, obviously, um, you know, C-suites don't have to be that tall, but that is exactly how the name came about, the elevator pitch contest. They're over there trying to figure out how to do this alphabetically. I figure, you know, we have college students, so they can figure out that alphabetical thing. So here's the rules. So they already know this, so don't have to worry. They can keep figuring out the alphabetical thing. But um, they each get 90 seconds, as I've stated. They cannot use any props. They're going to have to do it without props. However, they do get one note card. We have found that that reduces stress significantly. Don't you wish you guys got one note card for every test that you took in school? Be a good idea. Reduce your stress, wouldn't it? So we actually do that. Um, the judges will choose them. Now, what are they judging them on? 50% of it is based on the feasibility and creativity of their idea and 50% on the presentation. So these are not companies that they have up and running necessarily. These are ideas, and but they've got to be obviously ideas that have some ability to be worked. How are we doing? Oh, we're doing good. OK, so they're ready to go. So I'm just going to introduce the first one, Valerie Abel. An entrepreneur is a person who can see opportunities where others only see problems. My name is Valerie Abel. I'm the founder and CEO of Bowman Container Homes, and I want to tackle homelessness. Problem one, right now there are 1.4 million borderline homeless veterans in America, and at any given night, 39,000 are homeless. Problem two, a shipping container is very expensive. A Freightliner can spend over a billion dollars each year shipping empty containers. North America has an idle capacity of about 1.5 million containers where another 500,000 are scheduled to be turned into scrap metal. If you know anything about tiny houses, you know the, the opportunity in front of you. <clears throat> Excuse me. The container fabrication industry is projected to be an 11 and a half billion dollar a year industry by 2021. Now I know what you're thinking. Homeless people don't buy houses. A reasonable percentage of each sale will go towards retrofitting the shipping containers into self-sustaining homes for a veteran in need. Now, it's easy to kick the can down the road, but what happens when the road ends? Boeing Container Homes will be there. Thank you. And then just exit the way you came so I can give you your check too if everyone wouldn't mind doing it. So even if you're over here, if you don't do that, I can keep it, I could use it. Um, the other thing I did want to mention too is that Sue Klein, who's sitting right here in the red jacket, if she stands up, that means you went over time and you have to stop immediately. He was 125. He was 125, he had five seconds left. Okay. Second person is Jasmine Bear. <laughs> Sorry, I'm short. Now, if you'll indulge me for just a second, I want everyone to close their eyes. And I want you to imagine a nursing home. How do the residents look? I bet they look frail and fragile. Now open your eyes. Throughout our time here, everyone develops aches and pains. That's just life. But unfortunately, our current system in place is for chronic pain is for doctors to prescribe opioid-based pain medications. This is a practice that needs to be stopped. What's the solution? My company, Canna Energy Health, a medicinal marijuana product. Medical marijuana has been proven to relieve pain and also increase a person's appetite. 
My company, Canna Energy Health, seeks to develop of an organic beverage that's fortified with vitamins and CBD, which is a non-psychoactive oil derived from the cannabis plant that will relieve pain and also give my customers several of their daily vitamins, such as vitamin B, in one simple and delicious drink. Now, I understand there are certain stigmas associated with marijuana use. However, Canna Energy Health is the answer for our seniors to have an increased quality of life and to enjoy their golden years. Thank you. Next is Demetrius Brown. Good evening. Hi, I'm Dee Brown and I'm the owner of Four Seasons Harvest. We are a year-round local agricultural stem farm that grows leafy vegetables and regional fish. We use a holistic soilless farm approach with our patent pending, with our patent pending um, supplemental fee that we invented. How do we go our greens? It's simple. We use our regional fish and with that, that helps boost the nutrients for the plants to grow. Now what makes us unique is we have our patent pinning feed along with a specific ratio of local fish. And this ratio helps boost the nutrients for the greens to grow. Not only do they grow, but they grow in half the time as the traditional farms while using 90% less water than they use. Weather is not an option or a problem with our growth. Now our supplemental feed and our fish ratios are both operational. And that's great because we aim to deliver fresh food and fresh vegetables with the roots intact to enable the shelf life so we can provide the stuff for our grocery stores, schools, and restaurants. One of the things that we love is we're aiming to hire STEM students. Now, that is a win for New England people and the STEM students. These science, technology, engineering, and math students are here and they are the future of our system. <laughs> Sorry. For the first 20 years of my life, I avoided swimming. I finally took a swimming class in my sophomore year, and it was hell. No, I loved swimming, but my hair was the issue. <laughs> For those that do not know, ladies of Af braids and other extensions used by ladies of African descent do not do well in water. Because of our curly, kinky hair texture, drying and detangling after swimming is a tedious process. Hair extensions get easily damaged in water, and for us ladies, getting your hair done is a very long and expensive process. It's not worth ruining your hair, even for a quick dip. This is a disservice to a specific group because swimming is not just an enjoyable sport. It's also a very important safety skill. Here's what you may not, may not know. No swim cap in the market can efficiently seal out water or keep your hair dry while swimming. My name is Nkori Adam, and my business project is to innovate the standard swim cap we have today to create the Co Aqua Kit, a completely waterproof and airtight swim cap. Currently, my team and I are in the process of assembling the needed materials for the prototype. Finally, the greatest asset of the Co Aqua Kit is its universal utility, because even though sensitive to a target population, it is marketable to all women, regardless of race, who simply desire to protect their hair from chlorine while swimming. Thank you very much. Now, Brittany Femmelaghetti. Every soccer season is plagued by rainouts and cancellations. Having been a high school soccer player myself, I firsthand know the unpredictability of the fall weather as well as the disruption it causes to teams and players. 
as challenging as it is for our teams to, to, to adjust to these cancellations, it is even harder for athletic directors to coordinate the cancellations. Having worked in an athletic director's office, I know that one of the busiest days of the year for an athletic director is the day it rains. Hi, I'm Brittany Famiglietti, founder of Home Field Advantage, where we play for today. I have created a facility that will have full-size soccer fields so that no high school soccer game ever has to be canceled due to rain again. No other facility in Western Mass offers this unique opportunity. The next step to make my facility come to life is to create an app that will make the rescheduling process easier for athletic directors. Communication is vital, and all an athletic director will have to do is link game information such as the opponent, the date, and the time to the app. Bus companies, referees, as well as local news organizations such as Mass Live will be notified of the game change to home field advantage. Players, parents, and coaches will also be notified by the app through a text, an email, and a phone call. So will you let another rainy day get you down, or will you play for today with home field advantage? Thank you. Okay, next up is Maya Kazinskas. Good evening, everyone. I happen to know a young woman who's been bullied for a year. This has been going on through social media and at school. Her mom had no idea this was happening until she witnessed her cutting herself. Her mom and I are now business partners in Franklin County Against Bullies. Do you remember about six years ago, a young woman who committed suicide um, in South Hadley because of relentless bullying? We do not want to happen, this happen to our kids or any other kid. What my business partner, her daughter, and Phoebe Prince needed from the beginning was an understanding of the process to report bullying. What the schools need are training programs for, for their teachers, their students, their parents, and for, to address bullying. As a result of this, we have created a Facebook page that now has over 800 members. With membership fees and paid programming, we'd be our main source of revenue. To establish ourselves as a social enterprise, we are looking for financial support for our initial program. Thank you. Okay, Joe Lipinski. Now imagine you have one specific barber who you go to get your hair cut. They're like an extension of your family. You wouldn't recommend anybody else but them. But on the one day where you absolutely need a haircut before that big interview or meeting, they're not available and you have to end up going with some random person you've never seen before in the shop. And you end up leaving with a haircut that makes you feel embarrassed to even walk out the door. This is exactly what happened to me and what inspired me to change the haircutting industry. My name's Joe Lipinski. I'm the co-founder of Cuts. Cuts is a website that allows barbers to be individually reviewed by people who have just had their hair cut by that stylist. Now, you could just go on any sort of Yahoo or Google and look a, up a review. But when you do that, you miss out on so much information. That's why we allow Cuts to be a two-way street. Barbers who sign up with our website will be given a profile where they can identify any special skills they have, picture examples of their work, and even a small biography so you can really get to learn the person cutting your hair. By doing this, we allow the everyday people to see the collective individuals that make up a shop rather than just the building where you get your hair cut. But now, what's in it for the owners? In addition to a review system, Cuts also enab enables a booking service that these owners can use directly for free. So someone could come on our website, pick their barber, pick their time without ever having to leave our website and the shop will be directly notified. By doing this, we save owners thousands of dollars a year in something that they are already outsourcing. Thank you so much. Next in, in line is Delika Mazaya.
My name is Zoleka Musia and my account balance is currently $4.27. Like most of the students in the room, budgeting is a continued hassle for me. That is why today I am pitching Swift, a budgeting and mobile app. Now I know what you're thinking, but I have yet to come across an app targeting 13 million young South Africans, helping them to budget and save. I'm an engineering and computer science double major at Smith College. My partner, Sogazile Paranyatwa, is a law student at the University of Cape Town. And our mentor is a successful serial tech entrepreneur. As two young black South African women, we know the market because our product, Swift, is aimed at people just like us. We have a following of over 7,000 on social media, and we hope to use this platform to target our potential customers. Now the big question, will this work? We rolled out a survey which showed that only 21% of young South Africans actually budget, but 74% would like a tool to help them budget. That is where we come in. Now we're still in the early stages, but we could see this rolling out in places like Nigeria, the most populated country in Africa. Today, I'm asking anyone with experience in fintech to join us on our journey. Safe, smart, swift. Thank you. Next in line is Daniel Olive. By a show of hands here, how many of you have used your phone as an alarm clock? <laughs> I certainly have, but for me, one or two things has always happened. One, I forget to turn the volume up on my phone so I don't hear the alarm in the morning. Or secondly, I toss and turn like a fish out of water when I sleep. Some nights get so bad my, my phone goes flying off the bed and I miss my dreaded 8 a.m. class. Now, my professor thinks I'm being just a normal millennial and being lazy. That is not true. All right, sometimes it is. But finally, I woke up one day and said there has to be an easier way. There might be, but not as comfortable as this. Hi, my name's Dan Olive and my product is the Don't Be Late Pillow. The Don't Be, the don't be Late Pillow is just a Bluetooth alarm clock pillow. It sounds easy enough, but to make it even easier, I came up with the double C's. The first C stands for comfort. We paired up with Tempur-Pedic, and that memory foam on that pillow is so comfortable, I'm getting tired just thinking about it. <laughs> the second C is convenience. You simply download our free app, you plug in your desired times that you want to get up for the next morning or week, and then you hit send, and then it finally uh, you know, pairs up with the Bluetooth. Thank you for having me here today, and judges, don't hit the snooze button on this deal. <laughs> The next one in line is Kyle Pandasio. Six billion emojis are sent around the world every day. Six billion. If an emoji were just the size of your cell phone, six billion of these could circle the earth over 20 times. So why is it that people like emojis so much? It's because they become part of our culture, our language. It's how we communicate. For college students especially, emojis are a form of expression, like sneakers or hashtags. But our current set of emojis are limiting and rather generic. So that's where our idea comes in. EmojiU is a mobile application that will bring college-specific graphics to campuses nationwide. Integrated into your current keyboard, EmojiU will deliver an entirely new lineup of emojis that are personalized and directly connected to your college experience. Picture emojis of your favorite buildings on campus, places you like to eat, in residential areas. Imagine how cool it would be to receive a game day text from your friend with an emoji of your school mascot doing a backflip. Sam the Minuteman, Nestor the Owl, Lancer, Bolt, the HCC Cougar. Now, just for a second, forget about branded t-shirts, foam fingers, and rally towels. Start showing your school spirit with Emoji U. Thank you. We now have David Pearl. You ready? <coughs> Say there's an emergency in this room, and none of us know what to do. But just right outside there, there's somebody who's first aid certified and confident and knows exactly what to do. Our first instinct is to call 911. 
and we absolutely should. But it's going to take 10 minutes for them to get on scene. <laughs> My name's David Pearl, and, uh, <laughs> and I'm the co-founder of Bystand, the first ever crowdsourced healthcare app. Bystand connects certified bystanders with emergencies that are nearby to close the time gap between the call and the emergency's arrival. If an Uber can get to you in less than uh, a minute, why can't someone else? Thank you. <laughs> We now have a team. We have Rune Piercy and Alexander Smith. Hi, I'm Alex. And I'm Rune. Our company is AR Biodesign, and we want to save tens of thousands of lives every year using our new blood <laughs> diagnostic technology. So take my grandma Mary. She is kidney failure. And like 500,000 other Americans, she needs to be treated with dialysis. Now the problem is that tens of thousands of these patients are dying each year due to treatment complications. The reason why is because blood tests, which are used to adjust and personalize treatment, are performed way too infrequently, about once per month on average. And it's really ineffective, and because of this, patients are developing conditions that can be potentially very fatal. That's why at AR Biodesign, we're developing a diagnostic technology that uses microfluidics so we can take very small samples of blood and measure it more frequently, inexpensively, and easily. Um, you can picture this kind of like a diabetes insulin monitor, but tailored specifically for molecules that are crucial to dialysis treatment. Now, we aren't working alone on this project. We've been collaborating with various researchers at UMass, as well as managers at the Enfield Dialysis Clinic and nephrologists and doctors within the Bay State system. Um, with funding that we've received already, we've been able to develop a prototype, but with your continued support tonight, we'd be able to uh, gather enough data so that we can license this technology to our customers. We've identified these customers as parent dialysis companies like Fresenius because they're the ones that get reimbursed by Medicare for successful patient treatments. So, please help us save tens of thousands of patients every year by investing today in AR Biodesign. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Ashley Rivest. One hour. You have one hour before guests arrive for your first holiday celebration at your new home. You were super excited six weeks ago when you sent out the invites, but today you're exhausted and overwhelmed. You still have to finish preparing food and put up decorations, but your home is a disaster. Toothpaste decorates the bathroom sink, the bathtub needs a quick scrub, and the countertops are dull with fingerprints. You start to panic. How are you going to get all of that clean before visitors arrive and festivities begin? My name is Ashley Rivest, founder of the Scrub Buddy, a robotic cleaning device that automatically scrubs and sanitizes sinks, bathtubs, and countertops. The Scrub Buddy is durable, compact, easy to use, and the onboard sensors detect the environment to map out the best route for efficient cleaning. It is equipped with textured interchangeable sponges that range from fine for early morning mishaps to abrasive for cutting through tough grease and grime. Simply fill this scrub buddy with our patented cleaning solution, turn it on, and walk away. It moves with an oscillating pattern, can traverse an incline, reaching every nook and cranny. The evaporating cleaner leaves your home smelling lemony fresh and guest ready. While the scrub buddy is cleaning your surfaces, you can be devoted to the elegant details. From teens to seniors, the scrub buddy is the perfect household helper that works on any busy schedule. It gets the job done in a breeze, leaving sparkle and shine every time. Thank you. And last but not least is Zachary Slavin. What do I do now? This is what Mike says every time that his teacher assigns him a project that he doesn't quite understand. 
At a time like this, Mike will often turn to a nearby friend for help, but his friends aren't always around. Other times, he may use Google, but it, Google can take some time, and it's usually hard to find reliable sources. <laughs> On top of that, many good, reliable sources aren't free. Hi, I'm Zachary Slavid, and I'm here to present a solution to this issue, TutorMe.com. TutorMe helps connect students in need of help with students who are proficient in that area of study. These proficient tutors will be able to help students at any time, anywhere, through video chat. And the best news? Unlike Chegg and similar sources that can cost around $65 per month, TutorMe is completely free. TutorMe.com will generate revenue through student-targeted advertisements, sponsorships, and premium accounts. TutorMe will work with education-based sponsors, and premium accounts will allow access to further educational materials. To ensure that our, our tutors are qualified, students will be, able to, um, will be able to rate the tutors based on the quality of their performance. Tutors will be paid on, at a rate based on their frequency and the quality of their tutoring. So, with all this said, I would like to ask you all to help me to tutor her, tutor him, tutor you, and tutor me. Thank you. <laughs>